Well, I told you guys we were going to talk about wires, and that's a big category, so we're going to make it a video all by itself. Let's get started. First of all, the wiring that you install for your car audio system is the foundation. It's the very first thing you should do. Number one, it gets run usually under the carpet, behind trim panels, all that sort of stuff. While you're installing the wiring, you might want to go ahead and install the deadener that you plan on installing. Because once you get a bunch of equipment in your car, truck, van, boat, whatever, it's a whole lot harder to get behind those panels where you need to get to, to put the deadening in. So go ahead and install your deadening and your wires together. And uh, that includes the big three. And the big three is uh, where you run a power wire from your alternator's power output bolt to the battery, a heavy power wire, like a zero gauge, or, you know, depending on what kind of system you're running. I always recommend going bigger on the wires than you need because later you'll probably upgrade amplifiers and they're going to have to run the bigger wire to compensate. So go ahead and do that at the beginning. Again, wires are your foundation. The very first part of the building, everything you build on top depends on what's at the bottom. So having said that, the big three, you run a power wire from your alternator to your battery in addition to the one that's already there from the factory. Don't take that off just add to it. Uh, you run a ground wire from, I prefer, the bracket that holds the alternator to the engine. Find somewhere on that bracket to connect a ground wire and run that to your battery also. And then run a wire from that bracket or the battery to the body of the vehicle. And it needs to be a solid piece of metal that has the paint brushed off of it with a brush so it's down to metal. It needs to be have some thickness to it and not be like a little thin piece of something. It needs to be a chunk. A good solid point where you can transfer a lot of power through that, that metal. So, and if you're unsure about that one, or if you don't have that kind of an option, just run a ground wire all the way from the front to the, wherever your amplifiers are. Uh, solve all the problems. There are big three kits available, which give you all the wires, pre-terminated or with terminations, paint shrink, all that stuff, and I got them listed in the video down below, down there. So go down there. <laughs> you can either pick up one that I've got listed or you'll get an idea of what to look for. So the next part of that, once you get your big three done, and you're going to want to do that pretty much in every install, because it's going to help your entire electrical system, not just your audio system, but everything else. It's going to drastically improve your overall electrical system. So do the big three, get your power wire, possibly ground wire run to the back where the amplifier is going to be wherever it is and at that you have basically two options for running your power wire to the back and or ground or and possibly ground uh, that's one is to go through the firewall the second option is to go out of the engine bay and under the vehicle you know, back to wherever the amp's gonna be, drill a hole in the floor, put a grommet in that hole and run your wire up through the floor to that location. How you wanna do this depends completely on you. If you're leasing the vehicle, drilling a hole might not be the best idea. All right, if it's a really new vehicle, that might not be what you wanna do. But if you're committed, it's better to run it that way. The reason is it doesn't bunch up under the carpet, it doesn't cause trim panels to not fit properly. Um, there's all kinds of reasons why it just overall is a better experience. However, if you decide to run 
through the firewall, there's a few things you can look for in finding that spot to run that power wire through that firewall. One, if your vehicle has the option of coming with a standard and it's an automatic, there's gonna be a rubber blank in that firewall where the clutch would be. And you can find that sucker and run and put a hole in it and run right through that rubber blank. Uh, if you, uh, another option is where the steering column is, uh, there's sometimes an accordion rubber boot that attaches to that. You can cut a little hole in that rubber boot, slide the power wire in and come out inside the vehicle. Just make sure you don't get it right to wrap around the steering column. Cause that would be bad. Uh, on also, uh, there's other locations as well, but here's where I'm gonna put in a disclaimer. If you're unsure about what you're doing when you're making a hole in your vehicle, take the thing to a car audio shop and pay them to run your power wire. Because whether you're drilling a hole underneath to do the underneath the vehicle thing or whether you're making a hole in the firewall to go through that, there's always a chance that you're going to drill into something that will cost a lot of money to fix. Okay. So having said that, uh, I prefer the underneath the vehicle method. If you can find a nice place to tuck that wire and get it away from all moving parts and all heat sources over in the frame rail, away from everything that's hot or moving and make it secure so that it doesn't vibrate, move around, get, you know, uh, messed up or catch on stuff. It needs to be out of the place and secure. And there's usually a way to run that. Uh, these are just options. It, it, your, your, your particular situation and your particular vehicle is going to dictate which one of these is the best option for you. Now, in the event that you screw up somewhere, you run it through the firewall, you don't use a grommet, or you don't run it through a nice rubber shielded area where it's protected and the wire gets up against metal and sits there and vibrates and vibrates and gets hot and vibrates and gets hot and eventually the metal cuts through the insulation on the wire you now have a dead short otherwise known as an electric heater and it has no turn off it just gets hotter and hotter what shuts that off well, if you make that mistake, or if it just randomly happens in an unforeseen way, the thing that protects you and your vehicle and your house and your family and your yard and your neighbors from a major fire is having a fuse between the battery and where that happens, okay? So essentially what you want to do is have a fuse as close to the battery as you can get it and any wire that's not fused between the battery and the fuse needs to be secured in such a way that it doesn't go wandering around. Because everything before that fuse isn't fused. It's only fused after it. And if you end up putting a battery in the back of the vehicle, you've got to add another fuse there. you got to fuse as close to any source of power as you can. That way, if anything happens to that wire along that run, the fuse blows. You don't kill your neighbors. Cool, right? So moving on. Proper fusing. There's going to be a chart in uh, down in the bottom. A chart, a nice chart, where I explain basic wire uh, diameter or wire gauge. Uh, and and the, the the amount of fusing it needs and the amount of amperage or amount of watt you can pull through it. But I'm going to read it off to you anyway. So, now there's charts out there that explain this, but I wanted to make it super easy so that someone brand spanking new coming into this would have a general concept of what they needed to have. So from anything from a 20 watts up to 649 watts, watts in that range you can run an 8 gauge and something like a 60 to 80 amp fuse 
and that will cover that. Uh, odds are, no one's going to be in this category, but I wanted to cover it anyway. From 650 watts up to 1,249 watts, and a little over, a little under in that range, you want to run a 4-gauge wire and, uh, and fuse it for somewhere between 100 and 125 amps and uh, you'll be able to cover that whole power spectrum you know uh, and by the way this is all like 16 to 19 feet so this is all full length vehicle runs the shorter the wire is the more power it can handle but i'm using the longest run you're going to possibly make as my measuring stick so if you make shorter runs it'll only be safer you'll only have extra you know what i'm saying from 1250 up to 3000 watts, you can run a one alt gauge or a zero gauge cable. And mind you, that's both power and ground for all this stuff. You can't just run one, it doesn't work that way. And you would fuse that for somewhere between 250 and 300 amps, depending on what fuse you have. It doesn't matter. Don't fuse it over the top number. You can fuse it under the top number, just don't fuse it over the top number. The top number, that fuse is there to protect that wire. It does not matter if there's an amp even hooked up to it. Nothing about that's important. The amplifier does not even have to exist. The wire is a carrying current, and the amount of current that it can take is, is uh, more than what the fuse will let go through. So if the wire shorts out and gets, starts getting hot, which it will, the fuse will go, hey, there's way too much current going through me, and it'll shut it off. The wire would not do that. It would just keep getting hotter, and it would turn into molten copper and fire and death. So fuse is really, really, really important. Make sure you assemble the fuse uh, holder properly. Follow the freaking directions because you can easily screw that up believe me take your time make sure it is secure tight and properly done and i've also included a few recommendations for fuses i prefer the anl style fuse which is a blade style fuse with a little hook on the ends i do not like the barrel fuses with the screw deals and the little round they're just too easy to mess up and there's way too many situations where these things have turned into a chunk of melted plastic i don't like them i am linking some amp kits amp wire kits in this video and some of them do have the fuses in them and some of those fuses are those round barrel fuses just kick those to the curb and buy an a and l blade style fuse and put it in the kit instead you don't want that thing in your car it's if you it, it's just a accident waiting to happen i hate those things if installed properly with all the correct pieces in the correct place they are perfectly fine and they will do a great job they're waterproof and they're pretty hard to mess up once you get them installed properly but if you leave out a washer, a little spacer, a little ring, anything that creates a mildly loose connection, it is a ticking time bomb. So I avoid them and use the a &L fuses because they're simpler and easier to get right. And even if you get them wrong, as long as everything is tight, it will still do its job. So I like my a &L fuses. Now, moving on to signal wires. The first of all, a routing signal wires that's important uh, you want to route those away from your power wires you don't want your power wires running beside or twisted around or mingling or getting friendly with your RCAs most of the time this won't actually cause a problem but oftentimes it does you get these you know uh, engine whines and noises and, and uh, random 
sounds that you don't want and that's because the big old power wires are emitting a magnetic field whenever they're energized just like it would if it was a coil to make a magnet a single strand of wire also makes the magnetic field it's weaker but that rca that rca cable is at a very low level signal and it's getting amplified so whatever it picks up it's going to amplify it's going to amplify music it's also going to amplify the noise off that wire so you want to keep them separated as much as you possibly can if you have to cross them you want to cross them like this not like this like this go 90 degrees the least amount of contact patch the better um, it's just a rule I like to run my if I'm running them on the inside I run my power wires down the driver's side I run my signal wires down the passenger side problem solved when they come to the amplifier I let them connect as quick as I can and keep them separated as much as I can and then you don't have to worry about other things coming into play and by the way if you're still getting the noise check all your grounds probably got a bad ground somewhere it's almost always a bad ground creating that noise um, and there's plenty of videos on youtube about how to kill engine noise and there's quite a few of them uh, grain of salt whenever you're absorbing that information because some of it is hokey pokey some of it is good just grain of salt you know use your brain now uh, when it comes to rca wires um, some things you want to look for you don't care about gold connections i mean you don't care about platinum awesome crazy none of that stuff is important there's essentially two things i look for with wires rcas one is shielding uh, twisted pair is always a good because that naturally bucks those hums uh, uh, think humbucker and a uh, Gibson guitar you know the when you twist those wires that offsets or it, it stops the um, it, it counterbalances a magnetic field so it basically just bucks the hum so a twisted pair is a good point to look for uh, shielding itself they run an actual foil shielding down in there that actually creates a barrier around the RCA that doesn't allow the magnetic field to uh, get in kind of like a Faraday cage um, that's something to look for but don't get too crazy into those because almost all decent RCAs are are shielded in a couple of different ways so I, I got some linked in here check them out they're not expensive but they're not cheap either the second thing i look for in a good pair of rca is, is durability is it gonna can, can you can you pull on it tug on it is it gonna break in, internally are the wires gonna break easily if you step on it or if you give it a little twist or a little pull you don't want that <laughs> i'm speaking from experience because <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, you want some tough RCAs. There ain't nothing worse than having a pair of RCAs run all through your vehicle, all the way back, tucked in, everything is perfect, and then you mess around and step wrong and push wrong and you break it, and now you've got to redo. you got to run a whole new pair somehow, and that's a huge pain in the butt for such a tiny little wire. Um, and whenever you run your RCAs, go ahead and run your remote wire with it. And don't chance on the remote wire. A lot of these amp kits will also have a remote wire included in them. Take that wire, wrap it one wrap around each hand, and give it a pull. Does it break? Can you break it? If you did, throw it away. Just chunk it. Uh, <laughs> if you can break it pretty easy just like that throw it in the trash you do not want you don't even want it in your house you might be tempted to use it at some point and you'll hate yourself for doing so go down to the auto parts store and buy a roll of uh, like the yellow 
you know, 16 gauge or 18 gauge. 16 gauge is better, 14 gauge, 16 gauge, something like that. Some fairly heavy solid copper wire and run that from front to back. Because again, <laughs> just like with the RCAs, it's a delicate little wire and all of a sudden it gets broke somewhere inside the insulation and you got to run a whole new one because now all of your expensive stuff does not work. Put in a real wire. Um, you can use a relay if you want to. If you want to run a relay to run your amp, wiring a relay is really simple. But unless you're planning on doing a whole lot of crazy stuff in the back, it's not really necessary. Guys, uh, it actually takes more power to turn on a relay than it does to turn on like 40 amplifiers. Seriously. 40 amplifiers off of one signal wire will take less power to turn on than one relay does. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. It's not important. But to those that do, check into it. It'll blow your mind just how much it takes quite a bit of power to turn on a relay. <laughs> what you're, you're trying to stop pulling all that power because you're turning on like four amplifiers. You're actually pulling more power to try to fix the problem than you would if you just ran, just split off to all four amplifiers. Yeah, I like relays too. Don't feel bad. I know, I know the temptation, and I know it's like, oh god, I must, must have, must have relay. <laughs> yeah, relays are cool. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the videos. If you do enjoy my videos, hit this button right here, the round one right there. Hit that one. And if you like it, look, there's some more videos right here. Just check them out. Hey, it's the same crazy person. I'm just the same crazy dude. I make lots of videos. Enjoy yourself.